Hello everyone. It is uh, Sunday, October 15th of 23. And uh, as predicted, I don't want to fucking do anything. <laughs> I don't want to fucking do anything. Um, <clears throat> I woke up this morning. And yes, it was actually this morning. I did see AM. Uh, my stomach said, no, you're going to see AM today. That's happening. And took care of that. And then proceeded to lay in bed for like two more hours. It's amazing. I love days like this sometimes. Um, but, uh, someone went and commented on, so the, the recap for the scores, I mean, there's scores, um, the recap is up on the WSMA site, and I misspoke about how the scoring works. Color Guard and Percussion each get five points to hand out. That's it. Five. They, I mean, they, they'll award up to 20 in total. But they get their score cut and cut by a uh, cut down by a quarter, or down to a quarter of what they hand out. That's just how it works, how it's weighted, whatever. Uh, the performance metrics, both performance judges give twenty points. Um, the general effect, uh, what it is, is each judge has twenty points to hand out. They take the average of that and they multiply it by one point two five. Um, so general effect uh, is so music. For each performance judge is 20 points. Um, percussion and color guard, five points each. And then general effect, uh, each pair is a total of 25 points, again, for each. So that's 50 general effect, uh, 40 for performance, five percussion, five color guard. Anyway, moving on. Um, and the thing that bothered me was that a parent came on to the WSMA site and said, um, how dare you snub my kid? It's a shameful that you snubbed my kid's band again. And I'm like, okay, three things you're missing here. Number one, your kid's band, for the record, their percussion section had the highest percussion score of, of the entire day. In other words, that judge said, your percussion section is the best percussion section I've seen all day. And the band that was after it, it was second to last band of the night, by the way. The band that was after it, well, they didn't, ma they didn't match up to that. So, there's a win for your band that wasn't snubbed. Um, number two, your band was in a very highly competitive class in which five, half of the top ten were in. A full half. Your band would have taken third in one class, second in another, and would have won the other. But since you were in a very highly competitive class, you took fifth. That's the only reason. You cracked 80. And number three, how dare you diminish what your kids accomplished on the field? They did a fine job, had a great show. Maybe actually say, hey, that was a great show. Most of these kids, they, they show up. There, there were 29 competing bands. There were five exhibition bands, plus Whitewater, which doesn't count. I don't know how many of those kids actually came into state expecting to win. Greendale. Um, probably Greendale. I figure a lot of kids had figured we got a chance. We just had to have a really great show and have things just fall our way. And a lot of those kids are like, I really love doing this show. I love doing this. I, I love performing for people. I love this whole, this whole thing that we, that we do at state. And I get to go to state in something. Maybe the kids are, are like me. I didn't have anything else. This was my state championship. So maybe instead of going and blaming the, the governing body, which has taken steps, by the way, to change how the judging works. See, a, a number of years ago, I want to say it was mid-2010s, mid the complaints were, oh my God, all the same bands win every year. And you know what? They're right. All the same bands were winning every year. Cumberland was winning Class A, maybe Baldwin Woodville, 
Greendale has won everything for the last two fucking decades. <coughs> um, River Falls was winning, was winning AAA constantly. And then Quad A was always a Waukesha band for a number of years until the Waukesha bands left. And now it's been Oak Creek ever since. <clears throat> and the blame then went to, oh, we're using the same judges throughout the entire year. Which, you know, I can see some merit to that. I can, I can understand that. You have, this, you have the same judges who are seeing the same show and seeing the same improvements. So we said, fine, we're going to get first read judges. These are judges who have never seen the show before. And we're getting judges from across the country. We had one relatively local, we had one local judge last night. One. He's from Sun Prairie. Um, and has no ties to any of the other bands, from my understanding. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, all the judges were from not here. They were from not here. <laughs> like, like, very, like, I think the color guard judges was, was from Vegas. Uh, percussion judge, I want to say, was... Uh, yeah, actually, no, I don't remember where the percussion judge was from. But it doesn't matter. Because once we started getting all the first read judges, peop, guys who had never... Uh, judges who had never seen any of these bands, guess what? The same bands were still winning! So maybe it's not the judge's fault. In my analysis and years of working close with this activity, with this, with this, um, with this thing. Here are some of the common things that I've seen that make a, mar a marching band successful. Number one, yeah, okay, having a good director helps. Having a director with a clear vision with a clear thought of what they want, of how they want their program to go, and what direction they want their program to go in, that helps. Two, and this, this for me is the most important thing. You've got to have enough kids in that program to buy into what the director is selling, essentially. I hate using that term, but that's what it is. These kids have to, have to listen to what the director, <clears throat> excuse me, these kids have to listen to what the director is saying and go, yeah. That's what we want to do. And and not have those kids, that looks stupid. I'm going to look so dumb. Um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that thing. Um, but if the kids are going, no, yeah, that's great. I love this. This is a great idea. This is a great, this is a great thing. Then, what your band can do will shoot will will shoot up astronomically. Um, thirdly, <clears throat> you gotta have some parents that buy into what you're selling as a director. I mean, yeah, the kids are the ones in the field that are performing it, but if you need some some additional help, having a parent who can help build set pieces, who can help with uh, with hauling shit onto the field, because goddamn, there's so much shit that has to go on the field nowadays. Um, you know, maybe some, maybe one of the parents has like a, a lawn tractor or some kind of some kind of thing that will tow a trailer that has all the pit equipment, electronics, sound stuff, additional props, etc., etc., etc. Uh, to be put on the field. Cue my old man back in my day, rah, rah, rah. We took second place with hardly anything on the field. Thank you very much. And the band we lost to is one of those bands that kept winning every single year. Um, and they still do, by the way. Maybe there's some merit to that. So... Instead of complaining that your band got screwed, snubbed, whatever, maybe focus on what your kid's performance was. How did they feel about the show? Don't ask how they felt about the result. Because, yes, it is natural to feel disappointed about a result. Jesus Christ, I, it has been over 20 years. I'm still disappointed in that 2001 second place result. <clears throat> 
still very disappointed in that because we, we were just two points off. Just two points. I look at I look at a two-point gap now and go, God damn, that's astronomical. Um Yeah. People's priorities, man. And then someone actually showed up afterwards like, you know, and comments like this are exactly why kids don't want to compete. Don't look at the score, man. How do they do? How do they feel they did? Did they have a good time? Did they enjoy themselves? Did they enjoy what they were doing? And that's got to be the fucking focus. Honestly, of anything in any school. Did you enjoy yourself? Did you have fun? Do you want to do it again? Do you want to keep doing it? Great. And encourage that. I find it hard to believe that someone got snubbed for having, for winning a caption award and having one of the top 10 scores of the day. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, unfortunately that put them in the bottom half of their own class, but their own class was very competitive. Anyway, today is just a day to do whatever the fuck I want. Oh, the other, th the other thing. The other thing about state marching is, of course, now everything I listen to is, uh, can fit in marching band. Uh, today's thought is the theme, the theme to Tears of the Kingdom. And you know what? We're going to get that, we're going to put that on here. Because I feel like it. Uh, did I seriously not put Tears of the Kingdom? Um, there's Breath of the Wild. <laughs> One thought was, um, oh, where is it? Where, where are you? If you get one of those bands that has the overachieving parent core that wants to build everything, where is it? Where's a guard? There it is. Can you imagine a pit in a percussion section doing this? And that overachieving parent core getting a guardian? made anyway that's not what I wanted to show you guys I want to show you guys this yeah because I could hear I could kind of hear this being like a, this, be, this, sound, this to me this sounds like a closer even though it's a main theme you have the band coming back from maybe after the guardian battle have it be some heroic like recalling of like the, the main guard member who plays Zelda or who, Zelda and the other main guard member who plays Link ha I covered myself <laughs> cause I can see this being a thing and then skipping to give a sax player a solo you'll probably mic it cause that's how this works now Da 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 Little build, little build. You can see the line forming. Da. Man. Cranking that up because I want to. And you make the cut longer to have the band turn to face the front. I can hear that on the field. I can see it on the field. And this is how your story ends.
I don't know how you do this part, but I think it'd be really cool. Could be the resurgence of the next Ganon. I don't know. And you would actually have like a like a, a final chord, um, instead of just have it cut there. Anyway, that's where my mind goes a lot of these times. I'm still waiting for a band to do a Zelda show. I, I really am. Like a full Zelda show. Because you could do it. You could do it. I started, I started arranging it at one point. And, uh... Yeah, I'm not as much of an arranger anymore. Anyway, I think that's just going to be it for today. I've been talking for 16 minutes. Bitching for some of it and... Um... Not bitching for another bit. Um, before I go, I do want to, um, for the first time, I actually want to issue, issue all of you guys who are watching a challenge. Um, down there, down in the link below, there will be a link below, uh, that is for my Extra Life page. Let's try and raise some cash money for the kids. Um, as you can see, I mean, you, you see all the Extra Life shirts I wear, all of them, um... This year, I want to do a BizHawk Shuffler, which scares me a lot, but I want to do one. Um, the idea is that for every $25 donation that I receive, uh, that person can uh, submit a game to be put into the Shuffler. Um, games that are eligible are really anything earlier than um, Nintendo 64 and earlier. It's kind of my basic guideline. Look up, I think I'll have a link to the BizHawk Shuffler uh, in, in, the, uh, in the description as well. Um, so you can see what systems you can, you can request for. The exception is I'm not going to allow the, um, I'm not going to allow the three Zelda CDI games. Because as an overall goal, uh, if I hit $5,000 for the year, we got a ways to go. Uh, if I hit 5K for the year, I will play all three of those games in a 12-hour stream or so. Unless I actually beat all three in, in less than 12 hours, in which case I'm going to stop. <laughs> um, I am afraid to play these games, of course. But uh, this has been a goal of mine to hit the last three or four years, I think. In which we'll hit, you know, if we hit that, we hit this. We, we Yeah. So, make the donation. It'll ask you what game you want to put in the shuffler. And I'll put it in. And what happens is I start at one particular game. We'll play it for a little bit. And then the BizHawk Shuffle will go, okay, we're switching games in five, four, three, two, one. And then it switches the game. No matter where I'm at, I could be in the middle of getting hit or in the middle of making a hit or about to drive over or about to fall into a pit. Um, lots of hilarity will ensue, I'm sure. But uh, I'm hoping uh, that we can that we can do that. Anyway, that is going to do it for me for today. Um, click that link down. Click click the link down there. Make make some donations. Uh, all the monies go to Children's Children's Wisconsin, which is my local Children's Miracle Network hospital, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. <laughs>